all my dear grade 9 elite students to today's session. As requested by most of you, here I am helping you with part 2 of the math end of term 3 exam coverage. So this video is the first video for part 2 where we are covering learning objective 11 that is to describe events as subsets of sample spaces by using complements. So let's get started with the video and before we do that a humble reminder to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you are watching the video and finding it useful. It serves as a good motivation for me to make and more content for you. Thank you for subscribing those who already did. Let's look at the questions that we are solving today and all of these four questions from 11 to 14 on page 378 of your math book can be solved using the concept of complements. So let me give you uh, quickly the formula. So the formula that we will use to calculate the complement is that the probability of an event not happening is equal to 1 minus probability of an event happening. So this is the formula which works for complement. And we are going to be using it for all of the questions. So question 11, what is the probability of drawing a card from a standard deck and not getting a spade? So not getting a spade, the word not here, the word not here, the word will not be drawn and the word not landing. These words tell you that these are the questions on complement. Whenever you see these keywords, remember you have to use this formula. Please learn this formula so that you can use it correctly for these questions. Now we don't want to get a spade. So how many spades are there in a deck of cards? Let's first find the probability of a spade. The probability of a spade is there are 13 spades in a set of 52. Uh, total cards. So this is going to be on simplification 1 by 4. Now this is the probability of getting a spade. We don't want to get a spade. That means we need to find the probability of not spade. So here comes the formula of complement. We will subtract 1 from it. So 1 minus 1 by 4. We subtract the probability of getting a spade from not getting a spade. So this comes out to be 3 by 4. And if you read the question carefully, it says round to the nearest hundred. That means you need the answer in decimal up to two decimal places. So we are going to convert this to a decimal and it is going to be 0 0.75. So that's how you solve the question. Let's do next one. Probability of flipping a coin and not getting tails. This is a pretty easy one. You all know that the probability of getting a tail is half because there are two options when you uh, flip a coin head and tail so not tails would be 1 minus 1 by 2 when you do that it's going to be 0 0.5 you can make it into two decimal places by putting one more zero next is Carmela purchased 10 raffle tickets if 250 total tickets were sold what is the probability that one of Carmela tickets will not be drawn so she's going to win this raffle if any of her 10 tickets is chosen so what's her probability of choosing Carmela's ticket the probability of choosing her ticket, I'm just denoting with C uh, because of Carmilla, it is that any of the 10 tickets is selected. So this is 10 divided by total tickets, 250. If you simplify, it's 1 divided by 25. And if you don't want to have her card, then you calculate the complement. So you subtract from 1 minus 1 by 25, and this comes out to be 24 over 25. Convert into decimal and this is going to be 0 0.96. Let's do the last one. What is the probability of spinning a spinner numbered 1 to 6 and not landing on 5? So you don't want 5 to come and the probability for 5 to come will be 1 out of the total 6 options. There are 6 options. So you subtract from 1 to get the probability of not 5. So not 5 means you write 5 and you make a bar. It means negation. So subtract, take the LCM, it is going to be 556 five, and in decimal it is going to be 0 0.83. So your final answers for question 11 is 0 0.75, for question 12 0 0.50, for question 13 0 0.96 and finally for question 14 0 0.83. Here we have given answers in decimal because the question asks us to round to nearest 100, that is two decimal places. So these are the final answers for the four problems. I hope you found the video useful and if you did, give it a thumbs up, like, share and subscribe to the channel. Until then, this is Ms. Ruchika signing off from today's video. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.
Thank you for watching and stay glued to my channel Mathematics Made Easy. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss my new videos coming specially for you for part 2 and part 3 in a few days.